This video explains how a set of equalities among thermodynamic quantities was obtained. The equalities are usually classified in two groups, identities and Maxwell relations, the latter discovered by James Maxwell first and published in his book Theory of Heat in 1872. These equalities are pivotal in the calculation of the thermodynamic functions from equations of state. Both the two sets of equalities this video focuses on originate from the fundamental equation of thermodynamics and its combination with the definition of each one of the thermodynamic potentials. This video gives for granted that you are already aware of how to obtain this initial set of equations. A number of equalities originate from the fundamental equations of thermodynamics. Let us consider the internal energy and enthalpy first. We spot the quantity T that is common to both. Let us focus on the internal energy first, under the assumption of constant volume and that there is no change in the amount of substances composing the system, the variation of the internal energy is only function of Tds. Therefore, the partial derivative of the internal energy over the entropy at constant volume and amount of matter is identical to temperature. Let us now move to the enthalpy and perform similar considerations. In this case, we keep constant the pressure and run under the assumption that there is no change in the amount of substances composing the system. Under these assumptions, the variation of enthalpy equals Tds. Therefore, the partial derivative of the enthalpy over the entropy at constant pressure and the amount of matter is identical to the temperature. We have defined the first identity. The temperature is equivalent to the partial derivative of the internal energy over the entropy at constant volume and the amount of matter. The temperature is also equivalent to the partial derivative of the enthalpy over the entropy at constant pressure and the amount of matter. Let us now consider the internal energy and the Helmholtz energy. The quantity P is common to both. Let us focus on the internal energy first. Under the assumptions of constant entropy and that there is no change in the amount of substances composing the system, the variation of the internal energy is only function of minus PdV. Therefore, the partial derivative of the internal energy over the volume at constant entropy and amount of matter is identical to the negative of the pressure. Let us now move to the Helmholtz energy and perform similar considerations. In this case, we keep constant the temperature and run under the assumption that there is no change in the amount of substances composing the system. Under these assumptions, the variation of Helmholtz energy equals Tds. Therefore, the partial derivative of the Helmholtz energy over the volume at constant temperature and amount of matter is identical to the negative of pressure. We have a second identity. The pressure is equivalent to the negative of the partial derivative of the internal energy over the volume at constant volume and amount of matter. The temperature is also equivalent to the partial derivative of the Helmholtz energy over the volume at constant temperature and amount of matter. There are other identities to spot. Take a moment to extract them yourself from the fundamental equations of thermodynamics. Maxwell obtained the set of equations by working graphically on the Carnot cycle in the PV diagram. An alternative and quicker way to obtain the same set of equations is by applying directly the definition of exact differential to the fundamental equations of thermodynamics. State functions such as internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz energy and Gibbs energy are exact differentials and benefit from the special mathematical properties of state functions. We start by assuming that there is no change in the composition of the system. State functions benefit from the cross-differentiation identity. This identity states that the order of differentiation of the state function is irrelevant. The application of the cross-differentiation identity to the fundamental equations of thermodynamics renders 
in Maxwell's relations. Let us see how the identity can be practically applied. Let us consider a differential phi made of two parts. In the first addendum, x1 multiplies dy1, and in the second addendum, x2 multiplies dy2. Under the assumption that we have made, we can associate x1, y1, x2, y2 to specific thermodynamic variables, focusing on the u first. The cross differentiation identity is written as dx1 over dy2 at the constant y1, that equals dx2 over dy1 at the constant y2. We plug into this identity the quantities we have identified in du as x1, y1, x2, and y2 to obtain the first Maxwell relation. Let us now do the same with the Gibbs energy. We apply the cross differentiation identity to obtain a second relation, which this time is between entropy and the volume. You can work other relations out yourself by using the differentials for the Helmholtz energy and for the enthalpy. Take a moment to do it. We take now the Gibbs energy potential in full. For simplicity, we focus on a case of two components, mixture, present in the fluid system. The for the Gibbs energy differential will have four addenda. We write the general differential with four addenda and associate one thermodynamic quantity to each variable from x1 to x4 and from y1 to y4. We focus on the third term x3 dy3 first, which was not present before. The application of the cross differentiation identity to this case results in the equality between the partial derivative of x3 over y1 at constant y2, y3, and y4, and the partial derivative of x1 over y3 at constant y1, y2, and y4. We now plug the thermodynamic quantities in the general variables as associated before and obtain an equality between the partial derivative of the chemical potential over the temperature at constant pressure and number of moles and the negative of the partial derivative of the entropy over the number of moles of component 1 at constant pressure, temperature and number of moles of component 2. We can repeat the whole process by taking x4 instead of x3 in the cross differentiation identity. We will end up with an equality similar to the first. We can therefore generalize the conclusions by writing the expression for each component i belonging to the multi-component mixture. There is a second Maxwell relation which can be obtained from the differential of G by differentiating over Y2 instead of Y1 as done before. The cross differentiation identity is similar to the previous one. Take your time and try to obtain the missing Maxwell relation here yourself.